In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Victory is ours through him who loved us. Hallelujah. Let us worship and praise him. Hallelujah. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you who by night stand in the house of our God. Lift up your hands towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> the psalm set for this evening is Psalm 136. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever, who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever, who stretched out the earth upon the waters, for his mercy endures forever, who made the great lights, for his mercy endures forever, the sun to rule the day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the nights. For his mercy endures forever. Who struck down Egypt and its firstborn. For his mercy endures forever. Who brought out Israel from among them. For his mercy endures forever. With a strong hand and with outstretched arm, for his mercy endures forever. Who divided the Red Sea into two parts, for his mercy endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever who cast off Pharaoh and his host into the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever, who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever, who struck down great kings, for his mercy endures forever, 
who slew mighty kings, for his mercy endures forever. Zion, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. And Ah, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever, who made over the land as a heritage, for his mercy endures forever, as a heritage for Israel his servant, for his mercy endures forever, who remembered us in our humiliation, for his mercy endures forever and delivered us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever, who gives food to all that lives, for his mercy endures forever. O give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The lesson is written in the book of First Samuel, chapter 16, reading from verse 1 to 13. First Samuel 16, verses 1 to to 30. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul? Since I have rejected him as king over Israel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things mortals look at. They look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then made Shammah pass by. But Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy, with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, 
rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. Here ends the lesson. Our text for today, as I'm sure you all know, has these famous words, mortals look at the outward appearance, the Lord looks at the heart. What a wonderful, great life lesson that is, that God sees into our hearts and looks into our hearts and knows our hearts, and that we should too follow that example of rather looking at the heart than judging by outward appearance. On reflection on this text, I am encouraged by Samuel and his honesty in his vulnerability and his humanity. Samuel is a very famous and well-known person in the Bible. He's known for his miraculous birth, which his mother prayed for. He's known for hearing the voice of God speaking directly to him. And he's an absolute, if not perfect, example of someone who is obedient unto God. And so Samuel became prophet, priest, and judge. And he was instrumental in the establishment of Israel's monarchy. And he anointed both Saul and David. And so he becomes this great character in the Bible. But today's text shows us something of his inner life and his vulnerability. Firstly, we see that he is mourning like a real human being. He is mourning for Saul. And Samuel has, in a sense, mentored Saul, and they had a very close relationship. But Saul became disobedient unto God's instruction, and there was a split in their relationship. In chapter 15, verse 26, it says, uh, Samuel tells Saul, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the Lord. And that was the very last time that Samuel and Saul saw one another. Despite this break in relationship, losing or this breakup in relationship, in, in friendship, was a great loss to Samuel to the extent that he grieved that relationship and he mourned Samuel, uh, Saul and followed the mourning rituals. And we don't know the time that has passed since that breakup and since and between the breakup and when God spoke to him and saying, how long will you mourn? But we see the very real humanity of Samuel mourning for Saul. Secondly, one of the things that we as humans often hide or shy away from is acknowledging our fear. And Samuel is very clear in his fear when God says, go and anoint go and anoint one of Jesse's sons. He says, how can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. And that's a very real fear. And God doesn't condemn his for him for his fear. He rather gives him an option. Go and say, you're coming here to do a sacrifice. It's like a way out. But it's a very real, realistic and a rational response. How can I do that? I am filled with fear. What if Saul hears and kills me. Thirdly, we see his humanity again in his human tendency and his expectation for a new king. The first son that passed, God said, I will show you which one. But the first son that passed, he thought, this must be the king. And he says that based on his outward appearance and his height and his physical stature because he thought if Saul was something of great height, of this marvelous physical stature, surely this first son who looks the same must be him. 
and he kind of goes on his own reliance, his own interpretation of what a king should be like. And so we see this human tendency. And so Samuel is very real. He mourns, he fears, he's got human shortcomings and expectation. But despite that, God called him and used him. And he's had all this experience with God, but he remains human. God called him, God used him. In our world today, we often strive for perfection. We hold up this outward facade of being strong, of being in control, of not acknowledging what is happening inside. But Samuel reminds us today to be true, to be honest, to acknowledge our own grief, to acknowledge our own fears, to acknowledge our own human tendencies, because God already knows what is in the heart. And to break down this human or this worldly expectation to keep up this perfect facade of not being in touch or not showing what is on the inside. Despite our own vulnerability, God still calls us and God still uses us despite ourselves. And so let us be encouraged to embrace our inner life, to be true to ourselves, to acknowledge what is happening for us to be real people because God already knows our hearts. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the baptismal creed. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. I believe and trust in his Son Jesus Christ who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. In our Anglican cycle of prayer today, we pray for the Diocese of Taiwan. We pray for the Bishop, the Right Reverend Dr. Lennon Yang Rung Chang. We pray for all the clergy and all the people of the Diocese of Taiwan. In our own province, we pray for the Diocese of Saldana Bay. We pray for the Bishop, the Right Reverend Raphael Hess. We pray for all clergy and people. We pray that God will bless them all in their ministry and that God's will may be done. 
in our own diocese. We pray for our Ossesen finance manager, Charmaine Johnston. We thank God for her work, for her ministry, for her life. We pray for her and her family. We especially bring her before God in, as she prepares for her retirement. And we pray that God will bless her during this transition phase. At St. George's Cathedral, we pray for Dean Michael Weeder. We thank God for his ministry and pray God's blessing upon him and his family. We pray for the wardens and the parish council that God will bless them with wisdom and insight as they seek to bring leadership in this place. We bring before God Jennifer Hanslow and Marcus Slinger, praying that God will touch them with God's saving grace and that God will grant them healing. We pray for their families as they support them during this time of illness. In our year's mind today, we remember Jerry Brock, Robert Gray, Rowan Smith, Jack Weaver, and Jamie Bartlett. We pray for their family and friends, all those who remember them fondly, all those who mourn their passing, all those who loved them in this life and continue to love them and remember them. Lord, in your mercy, as we are reminded of Samuel's vulnerability, as we are reminded of his humanity, and his feelings, his mourning, his fear. As we are reminded to be honest and truthful about what we feel and what we experience. We pray for all those who suffer from mental health issues and challenges because of the suppression of feelings, those who suffer from depression, those who feel they have lost their agency, those who feel that they have to pretend to the world. And we pray God's healing and saving grace. We pray for a greater awareness and understanding and acceptance of mental health illnesses. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we ask you to give us your blessing to your church holiness, to the world peace, to this nation justice and to all people knowledge of your law. Keep safe our families, protect the weak, heal the sick, comfort the dying and bring us all to a joyful resurrection. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray the colleagues for today. Triumph God, Jesus prayed that we might be one. Help us to transcend our differences and find our unity in Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now 
and forever. Amen. I pray the collect for peace, followed by the Evelyn collect. Eternal God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works proceed, give your servants that peace, which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that free from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy, defend us in all perils and dangers of the night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. <laughs>